There's a saying among SwiftUI developers that your views are a function of their state. And even that's only a handful of words, it's probably quite meaningless to you at first. Imagine you're playing a fighting game. You lost a few lives, you scored some points, collected some treasure, picked up some powerful weapons along the way, whatever. And in programming terms, we call these things state. They represent the active collection of settings and results that are either describe how the game is right now. So when we say SwiftUI's views are a function of their state, what we mean is that the way your UI looks in the screen, the things that people can see and what they can interact with, what they've typed and so forth, are determined by the state of your program. For example, they um, can't tap a continue button until they enter their name on the screen. Let's put this into practice with a button in our body here. And in SwiftUI, buttons are made with a title string along with some kind of action to run when they're pressed. So we'll say, first, we have a tap count property equal to zero. And our body property will make a new button saying tap count is string interpolation tap count. And an action when the button is pressed, do tap count plus equals one. And that code looks reasonable enough. So it ought to work here. Make a button called tap count with a number next to it and add one to tap count when the button's pressed. However, as you can see, throw up an error, it's invalid code. The problem is that content view is made as a struct. And I think back to how we learned about structs, you'll know that means it could be made as a constant. And if it is constant, it means you can't change properties like tap count freely. Swift can't be sure it's safe. So we made our struct methods here. We want to try and change these things. We know in the past we've said things like, uh, mutating func do something and do the work inside there and, and that's allowed but this is a body property how do we make mutating var well, mutating var even like that and the answer is we can't only works on func so it's not actually possible to do that here in the body property and it might seem like we're stuck at an impasse we can't modify a thing we can't make mutating what are we going to do Fortunately, Swift gives us a special solution called a property wrapper, a special attribute we can place on our properties to give them superpowers. In the case of storing simple program state, like the number of times a button was pressed, for example, this, we can use a simple wrapper called at state up here. We just say at state var tap count, and that works correctly. And that's small change enough to make our program work. You can press command R and give it a try or use the preview canvas. So here I press tap, 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 tap. It worked correctly. And the same is true in the canvas over here. Tap count zero, tap, 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 just you know, smaller. Um, and this at state thing allows us to work around the limitations of structs and Swift. We know we can't change the properties because they're gonna be fixed, but at state allows us to modify Swift UI properties by storing them in a place that can be modified. Yes. This feels like a cheat, and you might wonder why we don't use classes instead, because they can be modified freely. But trust me, it's worthwhile. As you progress with SwiftUI, you'll learn SwiftUI destroys and recreates your struct views very, very frequently. So giving them small and fast is important for performance. Now, there are several ways of using uh, these property wrappers to store information, and you'll learn all of them in this course, all the core ones at least anyway. Uh, at state is designed for simple properties that are stored in one view. As a result, Apple recommends we add a private access control to these at state properties here to signal they're used only here and they're made here.